In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So uh, today, March 6th, is the Feast of Saints Perpetua and Felicity, martyrs in the early church in the year 203 in the city of Carthage. That's modern-day Tunisia. Uh, Perpetua was a young noblewoman, 22 years old, with a newborn son, and her slave, Felicity, was eight months pregnant. And the account of their imprisonment and martyrdom is the first-hand account of Perpetua herself. Uh, So she was living at this time with her father, who was a pagan. Uh, She was honorably married, but there's no mention of of her husband. And also at this time, uh, there was a decree of the emperor, no new converts to the faith. Uh, Not an act of persecution against uh, Catholics, but nobody could convert. Um, that, That was a capital offense. Uh, But Perpetua was was convinced, along with her slave Felicity, she was convinced of the truth of the church, and she insisted on going through with her baptism. And her father was upbraiding her for foolishly putting herself at risk and bringing shame upon the family name. And in arguing back and forth, Perpetua pointed to a water jug and asked her father, see that pot lying there? Can you call it by any other name than what it is? Her father answered, no. And so Perpetua responded, neither can I call myself by any other name than what I am, a Christian. Uh, Now we should keep in mind too that this, when we we hear the word or the term Christian in the early churches, it referred to Catholics, right? Which is the only true Christians. There was no difference. Christian, Catholic, it was one faith and one baptism. It's only been in the last 500 years that we have this widespread, seemingly difference between Catholics and Christians. It's supposed to be the same, one fold, one shepherd, only the Catholic Church are true Christians. So uh, anyways, her father was so enraged at this answer that he began to physically assault her, and she had to flee his presence. Uh, Shortly thereafter, she and her slave Felicity were baptized, and then, sure enough, imprisoned for having defied the edict. So uh, Perpetua writes that she was placed in the, the filthiest part of the prison, so crowded with people that the heat was suffocating. She mentions that there was no light anywhere, and she had never known such darkness. Uh, Despite the fact that um, she—and she was separated from her infant son, which he writes was very grievous to her. And despite uh, her, um, you know, youth, 22 years old and a noble woman, and Felicity was eight months pregnant, uh, the guards were very rough, uh, pushing and shoving them, uh, no regard to their condition. Uh, so the guards, um, the friends, uh, her friends or family uh, bribed the guards to move them to a better part of the prison. They were able to see visitors who encouraged them. Perpetua was allowed to have her infant son back, uh, which she writes caused her the greatest relief and comfort. And they were also with, uh, imprisoned with several others who had been baptized along with them, fellow catechumens, and also uh, uh, Saturus, who had been their instructor in the faith. He was either a priest or a deacon. He had had instructed them, and although he was not, um, he did not need to be imprisoned, he voluntarily went with them uh, into prison and uh, to certain death. So Perpetua prayed fervently in prison about what was to happen to them. Her her brother encouraged her. He said that, um, you know, you have given so much for God. Uh, What did he say? Something like, now that you have, um, you have the ability to have visions, pray for it. You know, pray that God will give you an inclination. Will you be released or will you suffer? And so Perpetua uh, prayed fervently about what was to happen to them, and she received a vision, which she writes down. Uh, She said that in this vision, she saw a golden ladder of the highest length reaching up to heaven, and on the sides of the ladder were swords, lances, hooks, and daggers. And if anyone climbing up this ladder looked away at anything other than heaven, they would be pierced by these sharp weapons. And at the bottom of the ladder was a large dragon who, uh, by his roaring, attempted to scare away those who would journey to heaven. So in this vision, Perpetua sees uh, Saturus, her instructor, go up first. And he reaches the top and then calls out to her, Perpetua, I wait for you, but take care that the dragon does not devour you. She responded, in the name of Jesus Christ, he will not hurt me. And as she said this, the dragon put his head down and was quiet. Perpetua then travels up the ladder herself, and she reaches heaven. And she saw, upon arriving, a vast and beautiful garden. And in the middle was a shepherd, 
very tall, with white hair. He was tending the sheep, and he said to her, Thou art well come, my child. And he gave to her some sweet curds and milk. And as she ate uh, and drank the milk and curds, uh, there was a large crowd around her, and they all shouted, Amen. And then she woke from this vision, and she still had a sweet taste in her mouth. And by this, she understood to mean that she and her companions would not be released, but that they would die a painful death, but afterwards they would enjoy the sweetness of heaven. So uh, Perpetua's father came to her in, in prison and begged her to give up the faith and thus save her life, but she refused, saying that we lie not in our own power, but in the power of God. And she was brought before the judge, uh, who tried all manner of ways to convince her and the others to deny their faith, uh, but they refused. They would not deny Christ. And thus they were sentenced to be thrown to wild beasts in the arena. Now Felicity, for her part, uh, by now nearly nine months pregnant, was in great distress because the day set for the martyrdom was before the day she was supposed to give birth. And according to Roman law, pregnant women could not be put to death. Uh, she greatly wanted to accompany her companions on their way to heaven and was afraid that they would leave without her. Her fellow martyrs also uh, did not want to leave such a good and courageous companion behind, and so they all fervently prayed that she might give birth beforehand, that they might all be martyred together, right, up to the very end. Uh, I would like to pause here on the irony uh, that such vicious pagans who were throwing people to wild beasts, who would scourge people to death, who had all manner of slavery and vices, had such respect for unborn life. Even if the mother was guilty of a crime, the child in her womb was understood to be innocent, and so to kill the child with the mother would itself be a crime. And so here we have our modern world calling itself civilized, yet it cannot even understand the simple truth which even those ancient pagan barbarians recognized. And I will say that the wrath of God is going to fall upon those who call themselves Catholic and yet support abortion. Right? These cruel pagans will rise up on Judgment Day and condemn those Catholics in name only and drag them down to the infernal torments of hell for all eternity. Anyways... Two days before her execution, Felicity went into labor. Their prayers had been answered. As she was delivering her child in great pain, the guards, these pagan guards, mocked her, saying, If you think you suffer now, how will you stand the wild beasts? Felicity answered them, I suffer now, but in the arena, another will suffer for me, because I will be suffering for him. By whom she meant Christ, who would, be, who would give her the strength to face her martyrdom. And by this, we, we should understand that Christ is not going to lessen every pain in this life. Uh, but if the moment comes for that, that where our suffering, on which our suffering depends our salvation, he will give us strength. So do not fear martyrdoms or great suffering to come in the future. When the time comes, God will give us that strength and he will lessen our pain that we may endure it. So on the day of the games, uh, the martyrs were led into the amphitheater to the mocking of the crowd. Uh, but Perpetua and Felicity and their two companions held their heads high, for they knew the dignity of Christ's grace in their soul. Uh, they were at first scourged by gladiators, and then wild beasts were set upon them. Uh, the men, actually Perpetua and Felicity, were separated from the men. Uh, the men were attacked by a wild boar, a bear, and a leopard. And the two women, Perpetua and Felicity, <coughs> Uh, a, um, a wild heifer with huge horns was introduced into their part of the arena. Uh, the men, for their part, were torn uh, by these beasts, but not killed. And likewise, Perpetua and Felicity were tossed about and uh, greatly wounded by this, this wild heifer, but neither did they die either. Um, the account is given that Perpetua, uh, as, after she'd been uh, grievously wounded, um, uh, reached down and uh, covered herself with her the, the gown she had on to preserve her modesty and straightened her hair, uh, still dignified even in the midst of this torture. Uh, this went on for some time until even the cruel crowd could no longer stand such a spectacle, and so they called for them to be killed by the sword. And so the animals were driven out of the arena, and the martyrs, uh, gladiators came in and uh, di dispatched uh, the, um, the martyrs, uh, now, Felicity and Perpetua were clinging to each other in the arena, comforting each other till the end. Uh, 
and Felicity was killed, but uh, Perpetua, uh, she got a novice executioner. He was a newer gladiator, and uh, either that or uh, he just, he just was, was fearful or ashamed at what he was doing, uh, but in trying to dispatch her, uh, failed. And he wounded her grievously several times until she herself finally took his sword and put it at her neck. And that act of bravery uh, was recounted throughout churches for centuries afterward. Uh, it was actually read alongside of scripture. Uh, so, <clears throat> Thus these martyrs valiantly gave their lives for Christ. Uh, St. Augustine says that these two women, amidst fierce beasts and swords of the wicked, vanquished the devil and all his fury. <clears throat> so uh, our lesson is uh, really how can we neglect to suffer for Christ? How can we complain in the midst of our petty sufferings, the, 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 the little irritations of this life, the inconveniences? How can we complain? Uh, especially if we think that it is our suffering in these little circumstances with generosity and courage that will enable us to suffer the greater ones later if and when they come. And I would say these days more than ever, we have reason to believe we will need courage in the future. Uh, so are we doing our part now to practice, to prepare for that day? Uh, we do that not by suffering great things now, but by suffering very many little things. For it is that repeated, uh, repeated uh, sacrificing of the will, the, the um, uh, suppressing of those, those um, uh, passions of anger, of selfishness, of pride. We work on those now, and then the time comes, and God can fill us with his invincible grace. Uh, so let us pray to all the martyrs, but especially uh, Saints Perpetua and Felicity and their companions, uh, that we might imitate their great virtue, great courage, and especially their great love for Christ, which was a source of all their other virtues. So God bless you all in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.